Welcome to Jnana Diksha Concept Based Digital Learning. I am Jala Sri Lakshmi, lecturer in English, Telangana Social Welfare Residential Degree College. Hello everyone, a warm welcome to this wonderful session. I hope all of you are enjoying with your family members in this COVID-19 lockdown period. Who are there in your family? Father, br mother, brother, sister, I think. Am I right? Okay. Which type of families we are leading? Is it nuclear family or joint family? I hope most of us are living in nuclear families. Nowadays all of us are living in nuclear families. But in ancient time, in the olden days, people used to live in joint families. Still some families may be uh, having their grandparents along with them. Have you ever observed the lives of the old people around you? Have you thought of them? How are they leading their life? Is the treatment of the family members comforting them? Have you ever felt sad of the ill treatment meted out to them? So with the neglected treatment of the old people, I am going to, with this concept, I am going to start the session with a beautiful quote of Eleanor Roosevelt. Beautiful young people are accidents of nature, but beautiful old people are works of art. I repeat again, beautiful young people are accidents of nature, but beautiful old people are works of art. Do you agree with me? I think all of you will agree. Before going into topic, I am going to deliver a small moral story to make you clear in which topic I am going to deal. A frail old man went to live with his son and daughter, daughterilla and an six-year-old grandson. The old man's hands tremble, his eyesight blurred and his steps falter. The family ate together at the table, but the elderly grandfather's shaky hands and failing eyesight made eating difficult. One day, while he was eating, he broke his glass bowl. All the food material was spilled on the floor. You can imagine the situation. The son and the daughterilla became irritated with the mess created by the old man. We must do something about father, said the son and daughterilla. I have had enough of thrill of this spill food on the floor, noisy eating, etc. So they planned a, and arranged a separate table to sit along um, separately in a corner of a room. From then, they were served separate food, uh, separate glass, separate table. Everything is arranged to the grandfather. Tears used to come out of his uh, eyes because eating alone was difficult for him. So, the husband and wife, both of them were happy now because as they arranged something separately for them. One day, before supper, the mother noticed her son playing with some wooden scraps on the floor. She asked the child, What are you making, my son? Just as sweetly as the mother was, the boy responded, I am making a little wooden bowl for you and dad to eat your food when you grow old. So the, the six-year-old boy smiled and went back to work. But the words so struck the parents that they became speechless. Tears started to stream down their cheeks. From uh, Though no word was spoken, both knew what must be done from the day. The grandfather was served on the usual dining table along with family members with proper love, affection. Sometimes we learn so many things from children. Is it true? There was a saying by William Wordsworth, a child is the father of man. So from this story, we understood you reap what you sow. In today's session, I am going to present a poem by Dilip Purushottam Chitre, Father Returning Home. Father Returning Home by Dilip Chitre. The theme of the poem is, it deals with the routine of the modern man in his old age, sense of isolation and alienation, purposeless life, generation gap, cultural identity, monotonous life, lack of freshness, 
existence of meaningless life, sense of disgust, sense of bleakness of old man's life, man's estrangement from a man-made world. So with this theme, Dilip Chitra has written the poem Father Returning Home. Before going into the poem, let us have a look or glance about the poem, the great Indian poet Dilip Purushottam Chitre. His full name is Dilip Purushottam Chitre. He was born in Baroda on 17 September 1938. He was a bilingual writer. He wrote both in Marathi as well as English. He published eight English poetry collections, out of which one is famous as his Varies. His collections of Marathi Bhakti poet Tukaram says Tuka, which became very famous. His writings reflect urban culture with much more focus on Mumbai. A feeling of insecurity and alienation of migrated people are reflected in his writings. He worked as director of Indian Poetry Library Archive and Translation Center at Bharat Bhavan Multi Arts Foundation. Shisha is an English translation of selected Marathi poems. He received many awards from Maharashtra government and Sahitya Academy Award from Indian government in 1994 for Ekum Kavita. He got the Sahitya Academy Award for Ekum Kavita. He had many films to his credit including the feature film, many short films and about 20 video documentaries. His work as a script writer was also exemplary. Okay, coming to the poem, let us feel the poem. My father travels on the late evening train, standing among silent commuters in the yellow light. Suburbs slide past his unseeing eyes. His shirt and pants are soggy and his black raincoat stained with mud and his bag stuffed with books is falling apart. His eyes dimmed by age fade homeward through the humid monsoon night. Now I can see him getting off the train like a word dropped from a long sentence. He hurries across the length of the grey platform, crosses the railway line, enters the lane. His chappals are sticky with mud, but he hurries onward. Home again, I see him drinking weak tea, eating a stale chapati, reading a book. He goes into the toilet to contemplate man's estrangement from a man-made world. Coming out, he trembles at the sink, the cold water running over his brown hands. A few droplets cling to the graying hairs on his breast. His sullen children have often refused to share jokes and secrets with him. He will now go to sleep, listening to the static on the radio, dreaming of his ancestors and grandchildren, thinking of nomads entering a subcontinent through a narrow pass. Let us deeply understand the feeling of the poem, what the poet conveys in the poem and what is there in the poem. The poem is expressive of the poet's feelings for the father at the later stage. He realized how neglected and uncared for his father was even after being lone breadwinner of the family. But the poem Father Returning Home has gone beyond its autobiographical significance. It is now an account of any old man who does the hard work for his family but leads a monotonous life where no one is there to take care of them, to converse with them, to share their feelings with them, to understand their feelings with them. Let us go deep into the poem and experience the feeling of the old man because all of us have to come, are going to come across this old age in our future. It is a universal truth that all of us will experience the old age. Am I right? It is not exemption to anybody now. It is true. However, aging is a natural consequence of being alive. It happens to every cell in our bodies and to every other body on the planet. Every living thing gets older. Aging happens no matter how much money you spend on damage, control, repair, how healthy you eat or what vitamins you take. Aging happens. Okay, am I right? It is true. So the first line of the poem is my father travels on the late evening train, standing among silent commuters in the yellow light. 
the poem begins with the speaker's description of the father traveling home in the late evening it indicates how the father works hard it shows his sincere sincerity towards his work his overtime for the working for the family he is spending overtime nowadays you can see both the parents are working they struggle a lot to reach home as early as possible but you know so many difficulties will will be there due to traffic or work in the office or because of so many circumstances they may reach late but you can see that they travel in the late evening so my father travels on the late evening train standing among silent commuters in the yellow light this line indicates that his suffering during the journey as he was old man he was working very hard he is standing on the footboard he doesn't even get a seat to relax the silent commuters commuters means those the passengers those who are in the train or the bus who are working they don't have any communication between each other all of them are in a fatigued and tired condition everybody wants to go home early and they are not even friendly to share a seat for him yellow light indicates the dullness the lack of cheerfulness all these things further intensify his agony and make the journey monotonous suburbs like past his unseeing eyes his shirt and pants are soggy and his black raincoat stained with mud and his bag stuffed with books is falling apart his eyes dimmed by age fade homeward through the humid monsoon night suburb pa sli slide past is unseeing eye suburbs means the sceneries that are sliding past when he is sitting in the train the poet has no attention to look at the sceneries or the outskirts or the whatever the scenes that are coming uh, when he is in looking from the train for example if you take any child first time when they travel in the train they show lot of excitement and anxiety to look out of the window but as this old man is not traveling for the first time and he may be all the years in this work he might have passing the same routine okay so he is not paying any attention as the child shows his unseeing eyes means vacant dull look this shows that he is not having uh any concentration towards anything next his shirt and pants are soggy and his black raincoat stained with mud it indicates his economic condition is poor but you can see his bag is stuffed with books that means he is knowledgeable person even though he is unimportant he is not paying attention to his attire his dress but he carries the books with him that means he want to enrich his knowledge he want to uh, make experienced person he was going to learn from the that we have to learn from the old people the that experiences we get from the elderly people so elderly people at home are like living golden treasure the gray hair of experience is the splendor of the old they have lot of experiences in their life even now he is still in the mood to read the books this indicates that lot of interest he want to gain he does not show any attention towards his attire now his eyes are dimmed by age fade homeward to the humid monsoon night that means you can see his eyes are dimmed by age the dullness the dimness and that is in this humid monsoon also he has to move forward the gloomy atmosphere also adds dullness to his life now i can see him getting off the train like a word dropped from a long sentence the poet imagines his father down from the train he compares here there is a simile like a word dropped from a long sentence it indicates that if a word is dropped from a big sentence that does not change any difference like that if any person gets down from the train that does not make any difference for the train or for the other passengers or for the other people am i right okay he hurries across the length of the gray platform crosses the railway line enters the lane his chappals are sticky with mud but he hurries onward 
So he is in a hurry. He wants to go home as early as possible. He wants to meet his family members. He wants to carry the message whatever experience he has with him. So the poet has used the word hurries twice to bring the sense of escapism from the dull humid atmosphere. The grey platform and muddy streets where no one would care for him. He just wants some solace at least at his home. In the train he was neglected. At least he may be given much attention in the home. So you can also imagine the parents working and reaching home with so many hurdles and difficulties. Home again. I see him drinking weak tea, eating a stale chapati, reading a book. Okay, hurry buddy, he will be coming across or crossing all these railway lines, the hurdles in the monsoon night. Then here you can see that again at home also it depicts the same isolation. Like usual days, he comes home hurriedly. There he sees again the same thing. He drinks the wheat tea, eats the stale chapati and reads the book. That means nobody is there to hug him, to show attention towards him, to share their experiences with him, to spend time with him. He doesn't even complain about this predicament. Nothing to do, he starts reading a book while drinking weak tea, eating a stale chapati. So even then without complaining anything, he starts reading a book. That means the books will give us lot of solace and become a friend and companion to us when there is, when we are or when anybody is in isolation. So we should make friendship with the books. I hope all of you understood now. Books are very, very important to us. Develop the habit of reading. Now the position that he is in, he expects nothing from his family members. Eating his stale chapati, drinking a weak tea, he again starts to enrich his knowledge. He goes into the toilet to contemplate man's estrangement from a man-made world. So he goes to toilet to contemplate. Contemplate means think deeply and seriously. He has chosen the toilet to think deeply and seriously. So what he is thinking there? About the man's estrangement. Estrangement means isolation, alienation. See this is a man-made world. This world is created by man. In this world again man has become isolated. This world is created by man. In his creation man has become again isolated. This he started thinking in the toilet. So, with that feeling, with the dull feeling, he goes into the toilet to think deeply. So, what is the situation? Now, you can imagine the nuclear family's condition. In olden days, there used to be joint families where aunts, uncle, cousin, everybody used to live together. They used to spend time with each other. So, they had no isolation like this. But nowadays, in this man-made world, you see big, big apartments. So, many people are there. Population is high, but when we take each person, every person is unknown to each other. Each are strangers, strangers to one another. They behave like strangers. Man feels isolated in the world, which is made by man himself. You can imagine the condition now. The father is indeed aware of his estranged situation and hopes to find some comfort from his family. But the ray of hope also diminished. As he reaches home, the toilet seems to be the only place the man has to go to contemplate his loneliness. Coming out, he trembles at the sink. So he comes outside thinking deeply in the toilet. He trembles at the sink. That means he is an old man. His hands will be shivering, trembling. The cold water running over his brown hands indicates his age. The water is a rejuvenating one, but here hands Trembling indicates the old age. Due to his old age, though he became very weak. The speaker observed the trembling at the sink when the cold water was running over his brown hands. The trembling might be due to his old age, the coldness of the water and also the fearful thought of his isolation from the rest of the world. A few droplets cling to the graying hairs on his wrist. Now you can observe there are a lot of droplets on his wrist, graying hair. This again indicates old age isolation. Water generally symbolizes life. 
grey hairs stand for the old age. So the old man's life is just holding on to his old age. It is of no significance to anyone. Nobody pays any attention towards him. He is leading a monotonous, old, dull life. His sullen children have often refused to share jokes and secrets with him. Sullen means dark and gloomy. These children, they are not ready to share jokes with him. They are ready to spend their time with themselves, but nobody is coming and talking with him. There is a generation gap that you can see here. The cultural identity you can see. The grandchildren don't like to spend time with the old people because they say that old all will be sticking to the old ancient rules, rules which are not liked by the younger generations. Because always the life changes, the changes will be happening in the life which, it, which is not accepted by the younger generation. See these lines tell us about the old man's relationship with his family members. His bad tempered, dark and gloomy children refuse to share jokes and secrets with him. A close and friendly association is not there among them. But they regarded him as an outdated, unwanted burden. Though he seems to be the only earning member of the family, in Indian families we see that it's the duty of the father to earn and look after the children. But in return, the children are ready to share their love and affection which is needed in the old age. He will now go to sleep listening to the static radio, dreaming of his ancestors and grandchildren, thinking of nomads entering a subcontinent through a narrow pass. We see the father going to sleep listening to the radio and that to static radio, that is grrr sound will be coming, the old gadget which he uses. He is not paying attention towards it also. He is thinking of many things about his ancestors and grandchildren. That means he is not living in the present. Thinking about the past that is ancestors and thinking about the future that is grandchildren. He is getting comfort in his, as he is not getting comfort in the present situation. He thinks of the past and moves to the future. And the people entering into the Indian subcontinent through the narrow Khyber Pass in the ancient time. How the people used to enter into the continent. Here it is an attempt to escape from his routine life devoid of human contact. That's why he started thinking about the things which will not happen in the future. About the ancestors. Thinking of the ancestors indicate that how the society has changed since the ancient times. How the olden people in the ancient times used to live. How the joint families with all people living together, sharing their feelings. Now you see nuclear families, isolated. These uh, uh, alienation and isolation is increasing among the people. Now in this modern world, this old people has no place and elderly people has no place to think of their loneliness and nobody is there to take care of him. Thus, the poem Father Returning Home the, by Dilip Chitre sympathizes with the neglected old people in our society, everywhere, in the train, in the workplace or even in the home. Okay, let us have a critical review of the poem. Here it shows the pathetic condition of an old man in a dramatic monologue which carries a single thought. It is written in a free verse, no particular meter of rhyme scheme. You can see the language is simple and layman also can understand the poem and so, with so many symbolic expressions that are used in the poem. Poetic devices like simile are used like, like a word dropped from a long sentence. The poem is written in the first person narrative. The tone is a little depressing and sense of bleakness of the old man's life is depicted. Enjambment is used when a line carries on to the next without punctuation, continuing the signs. So concluding this poem we see, though it is an undeniable fact that aging is ines inescapable and universal, people tend to ill-treat old people. The plight of aged people is pathetic especially in cities. The sense of loneliness and frustration they undergo the indifferent attitudes of the family members is hard to articulate. Regardless of your relationship with parents, you will miss them when they are gone from your life. Always respect, care and love them forever. 
those who respect the elderly pave their own road towards success having elderly people at home is like a living golden treasure elderly are like plants we should nurture them with utmost care love and affection i hope all of you will take care of your old people who are there in your home okay now let us see the new words in the poem let us enrich the vocabulary commuter it is a noun a regular traveler or passenger by train or bus between two places he is called as a commuter stale means not fresh you should not eat stale food in this covid 19 situation next one contemplate it's a verb which means to think deeply and seriously now the government is uh, central government and state government contemplating on how to conduct the examinations to the entrance examinations to the children estrangement means separation which evokes a sympathy next word static it means causing noise caused by electric vibrations in the air which obstruct tv or radio signals sullen dark and gloomy nomad which means tribals who move from one place to another soggy wet and soft suburbs an outlying district of a city especially a residential one okay this is about the poem now coming to the examination point of view students you are going to attempt an attempt um, annotation so uh, here i am giving you modern annotation for the first two lines my father travels on the late evening train standing among silent commuters in the yellow light first you should write the reference then context and meaning when you are writing the reference you should write from where it is taken these lines are taken from the poem for the returning home written by dilip purushottam chitre a bilingual writer context the poet presents a feeling of detachment that the modern man undergoes in an indifferent family and society he portrays the theme of isolation experienced by an old man through the narrator's father who travels by train in the city next meaning the narrator is the son of an old man a commuter in a train though he is in the midst of many passenger he feels isolated from those around him in spite of his age he is compelled to travel regularly on crowded trains he sandwiched between the silent commuters the portrayal of the old man highlights his fatigue and isolation the poem also depicts the plight of old man who must work to earn money let us quickly recap today's session you have learned a wonderful moral story wooden bowl that is the child is the father of man Be from where we learned uh, we should um, be respectable towards the old people you also became familiar with dilip purushottam chitre who excel both in english and marathi who is uh, one of the best poets of post independent india he is a sahitya academy winner who is not only a poet a teacher a painter a filmmaker magazine columnist translator and fiction writer so learned the theme of the poem which conveys the overwhelming sense of bleakness old man's life isolation desolation where he is neglected in all the uh, places where he went even in the workplace when even in the train or uh, in the family especially in the family wherever he is there everywhere the old and neglected people how the old and neglected people are treated how that you have seen in the poem those surrounded by people how a sense of alienation grips isolation desolation these are the feelings that people are having by the time they reach the old people all of us are also going to face the same situation but that the younger generation and the adults will forget you also learn how the poem can be critically reviewed okay the critical review of the poem where the dramatic monologue is uh, given in a good manner the similes are used next uh, enjambment is used it is a first person narrative uh, so how a single thought is taken and uh, depicted in a good way some new words also we have learned like sullen contemplate um, next uh, uh, static soggy suburbs 
so these words if we use in our daily life our uh, vocabulary also will be increased increased you also have learned how to attempt an annotation in your examination so in the when you are writing the uh, annotation you have to write the reference context and meaning clearly so that you can gain good marks in your examination so i thank each and every one for giving me this wonderful opportunity a special thanks to dd channel and social welfare department for giving me this beautiful and wonderful opportunity